Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special On the Ground. I'm Shireen Pan. Well, last October, the government finally decided to hand over Air India by way of the disinvestment process to the Tatas. It was a homecoming of sorts, uh, considering that the iconic GRD Tata had founded Air India. Uh, finally, the airline was given over to the Tatas in January and the transition is underway. Joining me now to talk about the flight path for Air India going forward is the CEO, who has in fact now spent about four months or three and a half months in office. Uh, Mr. Campbell, many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Appreciate your time. Uh, you you gave a very short soundbite a couple of weeks ago where you said it's very exciting uh, and that's all you're going to say so I'm hoping that you're going to say a little bit more than that today. I'm so ready now. Let me start by asking you about what is the most exciting aspect uh, of Air India. It is challenging as well but what's been the most exciting aspect of it since you've taken over? Oh goodness, Air India is iconic. You know, tomorrow is the 90th anniversary of JRD Titus first flight in, in India. And you know, since then, Air India has been the best in the world. It has stood for all that is good about India. But at the moment, it has some work to do to get back up to those heights. The most exciting thing about coming back really is seeing the potential. The potential in Air India because of the, the people's warmth and, and desire to get better. The resource and uh, ambition of the Tata group. Uh, the place that India is in both geographically, economically, uh, to support a, an airline that uh, we want to create in, in the form of the new Air India. All of the ingredients are there for Air India's spectacular success if we put the work and the time and the effort and the resource into doing so. So the exciting thing really is the potential. You know, uh, it, to be able to achieve the potential that you just spoke of, uh, there are several ingredients that need to be put into place, as you point out. So let me pick up on each one of those. Uh, and let's start with resources. Uh, what kind of capital infusion is required at this point in time for you to be able to achieve the kind of targets that you've set out for Air India? Well, we're not talking specifically numbers at the moment. We're talking about ambitions. You know, we've publicly stated that we want to increase the fleet by about three times. We want to invest in products and systems and services that the customer experiences, but also that the employees need in order to provide the service we want to provide. Uh, it's going to require significant investment in aircraft, mm. but not just aircraft. Uh, really, so it's more about ambition rather than dollars at the moment. Provided that we execute well and we are delivering the, the value and meeting the aspirations of our shareholder, I'm quite confident the capital will come. But what would the ballpark number be, uh, you know, given the fleet uh, expansion aspirations that you have, as well as everything else that you want to fix on the back end? And where is the capital going to come in from? Are you looking for capital outside uh, of the promoters? Mm -hmm. Well, again, I'm not going to put a number to the capital. I think you can do some back of the mm. envelope calculations if you triple the fleet, and multiply that by the, you know, aircraft prices, you, you get a sense. Yeah, it would depend on who you're talking to and, and how hard, hard of a bargain you're going to negotiate. And, and trust me, we're <laughs> negotiating a very hard bargain. Uh, but it's big numbers. But, but it's big numbers in the context of, of rebuilding an airline, a, a world-class airline, an airline with a global reach that represents and takes India to the world. So the numbers are big, but the ambition is big, and I think we, we've, we've got the backing and the support to do it. Uh, with, with respect to how long it takes, look, it's going to take a while. This is going to be a, uh, it's not a T20, this mm. is a test match. Mm -hmm. and, and in a test match, you, you, you have different milestones. In the way to 100, you need to be patient, you need to be ambitious, you need to be sometimes a little bit lucky, sometimes you'll score sixes, but mostly it's about graft, application, patience, and scoring those ones and twos consistently mm. over time to reach the objective. Mm -hmm. So, you know, since you're talking about scoring the ones and twos, uh, let, me, let me pick up on that. Uh, there was a fleet expansion plan which started by the end of this year and it continues, uh, you know, to the early part of next year as well. Is that on track? How many aircraft do you intend uh, to have on board between December to the first quarter of next year? Hmm. So we started with uh, a number of aircraft that were grounded and over the course of the last five or six months, We've spent a lot of time working with Boeing and other uh, OEMs to get these aircraft back into service. We've put 16 aircraft back into service. We've got another 12 to go. So that has enabled some expansion. The next immediate phase of expansion comes with leasing in of aircraft. Yeah. We have five uh, wide-body aircraft that we've already announced we're deploying to yeah. particularly North American markets, and then 25 narrow bodies that will come in in the early part of next year in order to support the, the short-haul or domestic fleet. 
We're in conversations with other lessors to bring in more narrow bodies and wide bodies uh, throughout the course of 2023. And of course, then we've got our OEM discussions with Boeing and Airbus and the engine manufacturers, which will then take the fleet expansion forward with aircraft that we will own uh, and then carry forward from 2024 onwards. So we will increase the actual operating fleet from about 30, maybe nearly to 60 by the end part of 2023 and uh, from 50 odd to uh, probably 75 in the narrow body space. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, that's as far as the fleet expansion mm -hmm. is concerned. Let's talk about people as well, because mm -hmm. there was a one year retention period as yes. part of the disinvestment plan that the government had put in place. Uh, that will come to a close uh, uh, in January. Uh, so what's the plan as far as people are concerned? What's been the VRS offtake? Mm -hmm. uh, and what's the hiring plan as well? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so for the VRS, we, we had a VRS uh, launched in June. Uh, about three and a half thousand people were eligible, about 43% took it up. And they're in the process of, of their, their release. Many are, are working uh, for their own reasons for a little bit longer than the, uh, the original VRS period. Uh, we've been recruiting significantly uh, because we are in a growth phase. For the first time in eight years, Air India is growing its fleet and therefore growing its, its manpower requirement. Uh, we've, we're bringing in about 250 cabin crew a month, new cabin crew. Uh, we're bringing about 100 pilots in every quarter uh, and we just released a, an ad for MBA qualified people to join the management cutter mm -hmm. uh, at all levels of the management cutter across the business and had many, many thousands of applicants. Uh, so we're very encouraged by the interest of people to join Air India. Uh, as we move forward, you know, clearly there's, there's going to be new opportunities that come with growth. Uh, and we're in the process of deciding what skills and capabilities the organization needs, what skills and capabilities we already have, how we can fit those two together, what training or assistance we can provide people, because the people that want to stay with, with Air India and contribute to the success and the ambition that we have, uh, we we've, would very much welcome everyone to, to contribute to this task, because it's not an easy one. Mm. No, it isn't. Uh, and speaking of uh, challenging tasks ahead of you, uh, you've got, of course, the aspiration of being able to take your market share to 30%, but that's as part of your five-year transformation mm -hmm. plan. Uh, in the near term, you know, you're about 8.4% as of today, mm -hmm. uh, slipping a little bit back and forth over the last few months. But what is it that in the interim that you believe you're going to be able to, uh, to improve on, given the fact that you are adding capacity as well? In the context of market share, yes. generally? So bringing leased aircraft in is, is one where, as I say, we're, we've got some already signed. We're in conversation for more. Uh, so yes, it's a five-year project to get to 30% market share. There's various ways to do it, uh, but we're quite confident, well, we're very confident of doing so. Uh, and yes, it's going to be step by step. As I say, all those ones and twos will add up. Mm -hmm. But in the near term, like 2023, what, what do you believe you're going to be able to do in terms of improvement, both in terms of market share as well as some of the other metrics that I know you're keen to focus on, on-time performance and so on and so forth? Well, the, the intake of aircraft and the restoration of grounded aircraft will necessarily lead to an increase in capacity. Whether that leads into an increase in market mm. share obviously depends on what other players in the market do. But we, the things that are under our control, we're putting in place. Uh, with respect to on-time performance, uh, Air India didn't have a good reputation, let's be fair. Uh, there were many, many reasons for that. Systems, processes, uh, focus, um, aircraft availability, uh, reliability, all of these things. Uh, but I'm pleased to say that since April, when we were sixth in the domestic market, in September, uh, we have finished provisionally first. The results are going to be officially coming out uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, so we'll be first or second, uh, hopefully first. And if we are first, that will be the first month mm. since at least 2014 that Air India was number one. We only went back to 2014. We didn't have records before, so it might even be longer than that. But number one for September. You know, speaking of success and speaking of important metrics uh, that one would expect changes uh, to, to see changes in, um, financial health and financial performance. Mm. While revenue has grown, at least uh, in the last reported numbers for March 2022, the mm. year ending FI22, uh, revenues grew, but so did the losses, losses of over 9,500 crores. What is the current burn rate on a daily basis as far as Air India is concerned? And how much do you believe you're going to be able to do in terms of trimming the losses? Mm. Well, there's a lot we can do. Uh, many, many contracts have been re renegotiated. Uh, we have aircraft that previously were being paid for but not able to fly, putting them progressively back into service. 
um, new systems and tools, revenue management systems, distribution capabilities. Uh, as we get more punctual and, and therefore more reliable, you know, we, we can charge people uh, a fare that is commensurate with the product quality they're getting. Uh, but there's many other things we, we need to do, you know, seats, inflate entertainment, all of these things we're investing in to take that product a little bit further. Um, but yes, you know, it, it is still a challenged business and the high fuel prices at the moment are, are, are not helping any airline, mm. including uh, Air India. But we're confident that there is a path to success. We're confident the path to success is, is not forever. And so, yes, I think we're, we're quietly optimistic that we can turn this business around in a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, speaking of options uh, and two of the airlines within the domestic market are looking at the government credit guarantee scheme, the ECLGS uh, scheme that has been made available to the aviation sector to try and help airlines ride out the tough times. Uh, what are the options that you're considering at this point in time, specifically uh, from a financial perspective? No, at the moment, we've, we're well capitalized. Uh, clearly, there's some cleaning up that we continue to need to do, but we won't be looking at anything like that. Okay. Uh, you know, you talked about the aspiration, you talked about the changes uh, at this point in time. Where have you been able to do the heavy lifting? Uh, how successful have you been in the areas that you've been able to do the heavy lifting so far? And what will be the areas of priority, at least in the next few months? Mm. Especially external, I mean, not just the changes that you're making internally, but also external communication to your stakeholders. So, so the most important thing that we focus on, clearly safety is the most important. And, and as we go through a lot of this foundational investment, uh, the most important thing really is what does the customer experience? Uh, you know, refunds. There, there were many, many thousands of refunds that have been outstanding, most pertaining to the COVID period. We, we've cleaned those up. We've publicly gone out and said, if you think you've got a refund owed by Andrea, please write to us. We want to resolve it. Uh, punctuality, I spoke about. Uh, with seats, carpets, curtains, uh, all of the things on the aircraft we're progressively trying to upgrade. Um, In-flight entertainment. All the wide-body business class in flight entertainment should be working by the end of this month. All of the economy class should be working by the end of January. Uh, we are in the process of talking to manufacturers and suppliers about potentially refurbishing the entire interior of, of some of our aircraft. Call center, we've recruited hundreds more people so that the, the time, processing time, uh, is much, much shorter and the quality of people responding is much better airports recruiting our own staff to make sure that there is supervision on on contractors that provide our work but also educating and enthusing the, the ground handling agents so that they represent us with pride so many many touch points uh, we've changed our, our core passenger service system which underpins our reservations but also our website and our app so there's been some improvement in those and it's bought us time now to do a, a complete rebuild of both of those interfaces so that uh, we, we uh, second to none amongst the airlines. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of things going on, but the priority really has been what does the customer experience with us? How can we demonstrate that this is a new Air India? How can we resolve those pain points that they've experienced you know, at a war scale? And once we've done that, then we can really start focusing on taking what is then a good airline to be world class. We'll head into a break, but when we return, we continue our conversation with the CEO of Air India on the airline's flight path going forward.